Hello and welcome to another Tactical Corner. Today we take a look at the game that happened earlier this week between the Space Wolves and the Dark Eldar in a Highlander style narrative battle report. If you haven't already, check the link down below and watch the battle report first. But here we break down the different tactical nuances of the game to hopefully improve your tactical acumen. Hello, and welcome to another Tactical Corner. I'm Skari, your grateful host, and this is where I sit down and talk about the game that was released earlier in the week. This game we saw the Space Wolves with some Cult Mechanicus and some Adeptus Custodes playing in a very cool little narrative game. It was a Dawn Raid, an old mission uh, from uh, the battle missions book where the Dark Eldar essentially ambush an enemy army. And we're playing a Highlander style game, which means that you cannot take any repeat units. Now these games are always very unique in the sense that because you're not allowed repeat units, every model and every unit that you take it's worth its weight in gold. One Raider, one Venom, one Rhino, one Razorback. And all of these become a pivotal and integral part of your strategy. The game itself sees the Adeptus Mechanicus concentrated in the far corner of the battlefield, essentially in digging mode, and then the Dark Eldar sweep in with some fast-moving units and hope to um, catch them off guard before enemy uh, reserves can counterattack. So for this mission, I saw that he had a lot of heavy hitters on the board. He had Grav, he had the cool contortion cannons, and that was really going to put a damper on my tanks and my other units, so I needed to tie them up as soon as possible. Using Night Fight to my advantage to mitigate damage on the first turn, I moved up both the Witches and the Reaver jet bikes to tie up his shooting models. This meant that I was able to maneuver the rest of my army and put my reserves in place throughout the game to then have my reserves um, prove to be an integral part of the second part of the game itself. You see, the witches are great. They don't really do a lot of damage. They won't kill things, but they will tie things up in close combat. And, you know, uh, with their 4 plus and vulnerable save in combat, combined with, say, feel no pain from the power from pain table, they can hold their own in combat against, um, you know, the most average style of troops, in this case an HQ and, and some, some, uh, some uh, servitors. They won't, you know, usually survive against dedicated anti-infantry combat, like, say, the Thunderwolves, but they will tie them up, especially if um, they have some sort of morale boost um, uh, towards the later parts of the game. So the Witches themselves did get whittled down over time in that combat, and I wasn't expecting them to, to last forever. I just needed the rest of my army to get into a position where I could then capitalize on the stall. Now there was a key mo couple of moments in the game when my opponent's reserves all came on, Thunderwolves, um, you know, uh, Custodes, everything, and, and I had to sacrifice the Reaver jet bikes to kind of hold the Thunderwolves off to the flank, the Thunderwolves and the battle leader. Now this proved to be a lot more successful than I originally thought, and one of my biggest mistakes in the game was ignoring that lone wolf. Um, he ended up killing a Talos, uh, you know, my witches, uh, taking an entire, uh, killing the Ravager. He just went on a rampage. And all in all, it was a cool chance to see what the Custodes could do. Now, on that flank, the Thunderwolves ended up dying to the Reavers, and the Wolfguard battle leader ended up taking you know, almost dying to the Mandrakes. So it just shows that even the most lowliest troops, even the, the, the simplest weapons can sometimes turn the tide of the game. This really 
put um, a, a halt on the heavy hitters of the Space Wolf army. And it really opened up the entire game once the Thunderwolves were no longer a legitimate threat. And this was essentially the last straw in that game for the Thunderwolves. Um, you know, having lost their heavy hitters, even though the 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 um, servitors and the HQ were were okay and and relatively unharmed, it also meant that he wasn't really able to push out towards any of the objectives. And at the end of the day, it was the objectives that were going to make or break the game. It's eventually, I had to kind of sacrifice my um, scourge to go in. Um, the reason I sacrificed my scourge is because he had the rights of the electromancy on um, his servitors, and I got um, hit a million times with strength four hits, and, and having a four plus armor save and the feel no pain really meant the scourge were able to soak up that initial shock so that the uh, shadow field would not get shorted out um, in, uh, in that combat. And eventually it was just my Archon passing Shadowfield after Shadowfield after Shadowfield save and just using his Husk Blade to slowly inch away at those servitors and at the HQs. And then the one Reaver jet bike that survived combat with the Thunderwolves getting into a position to uh, then later in the game in the middle of the board. The Custodes did come in a turn late. But they did prove their worth um, going in and really pulling their weight against the back corner, um, killing everything they essentially came into contact with. And it really showcased how tough they are. They're, they're better than, than um, paladins, like Grey Knight paladins. They're tougher, they have uh, the same sort of rules, and, and all in all, they're, they're just eternal warrior. They're, they're quite, quite tough. Uh, this is the Reaver jet bike that was able to survive, take that objective, and essentially win me the game. But even though um, it seemed like I was in a good position, the last couple of turns got really cagey. Had a few things happen that went my opponent's way, like the Lone Wolf surviving when all my Cabalite uh, Trueborn decided to fire at him, or um, when the Custodes fired into the Reaver jet bike and failed to kill him. Um, my Cablite Warriors did what they do best, went for objectives, kind of held ground. That's exactly what they do best. And last but not least, we had, um, you know, just an overshot here. But in that corner, that Reaver Jet Bike dying changes the game, it becomes a draw or even an Imperial win. And, you know, with me um, being able to take the objectives, I was hoping for it to end on turn five, but it went to turn six and then turn seven. And... All the meantime, my Space Wolf opponent had a chance to claw his way back from defeat and just, and I didn't have much left. Yes, the biggest thing I had was probably the Razor Wing, which is my anti, anti, like, armor and stuff like that, but all, it, it came down to the objectives. And, you know, those custodies, even though they came in late, just proved to be a, a, a pretty big beat stick. And luckily, my Razor Wing was armed with Disintegrator Cannons, which is, you know, the way I like to run them. And at the end of the game, they just didn't have enough wounds remaining to stay alive. All in all, fantastic game. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below. If you'd like to support the channel, check, us, check me out on Patreon and help out there. And I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next week.